Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Humans in Five. Examining the bodies of people who have died in the past usually means that only part of their body is preserved, their skeleton. Soft tissue like muscle, fat, skin, or hair doesn't preserve in the same way that bone does, so we usually can't analyze these tissues when it comes to understanding more about past lives. However, every now and then, we have an amazing opportunity to see a more complete human body from the past. The process of mummification is one way of preparing someone's body that preserves a lot more of their soft, squishy bits. Broadly, mummification removes moisture from the body. Moisture is the conduit for decomposition, so by finding ways to dry out body tissues, you can keep the process of decay a bay for a little bit longer. The ancient Egyptians began mummifying their dead in about 2600 BCE, using a process that took about 70 days. This process involved removing internal organs and covering the body in a special type of salt called natron to speed up the drying out process. The body was then washed and wrapped in about 90 meters of linen and embalmers would pour resin on the body in between the linen layers. Ancient Egyptians were not the only ones to prepare the bodies of the dead using mummification. The Capuchin Friars were established in Palermo in Italy in 1534 as a monastic order. They built the Capuchin Catacombs of Palermo as a final resting place for their brothers, making use of existing ancient caves to create a set of grottos where the dead could be laid to rest. Capuchin monks found that with time, many of their dead had become naturally mummified as a result of the dry cave air, such that the faces of some of their departed brothers were recognizable. Taking this as a sign from God, the monks started a similar process to the ancient Egyptians to dry out the bodies of their dead and display them as relics. With time, the catacombs expanded to include the bodies of many of Palermo's community members, including their youngest. Children who died were often laid to rest in the catacombs too, though frequently without any records as to who they may have been in life. Dr. Kirsty Squires from Staffordshire University is leading a new project with the aim of giving a complete picture of the lives and death of these children. Using non-invasive imaging technologies, such as portable X-ray machines, Squires and her team will capture thousands of X-ray images of these children to understand more about their health. They'll use these images to examine the skeletons of these children, which can give vital clues about their diets in life or whether they might have broken bones or suffered from long-term diseases. Squires and her team could use an invasive method, such as an autopsy, to find out more about these children's bodies. However, disturbing the body in this way might cause irreparable damage and would also break the peace of these children in a space where many of them have been resting since the 19th century. Seeing through the body by using X-ray or CT technology might be seen as overly fiddly or expensive by many, but these types of methods give us the chance as researchers to learn more about a person who's been mummified while still respecting their rest. We hope this episode has taught you a little more about how we can see through bodies from the past, and we'll see you next time on Humans in Five. And don't forget to subscribe.